industrial accidents, ancient Solving poisoners, crime, poison prevention. Spills. This is Toxic History. And here is Dr. Courtney Temple to speak with you about the yew tree in history and toxicology. So my name is Courtney Temple and I'm one of the Senior Medical Toxicology Fellows at OHSU. And today I'm going to talk about the history and toxicology of the yew tree from Hakate to Paclitaxel. So the yew tree, affectionately known throughout history as the tree of life and death, has been prominent in ancient texts. Permeating through literature as stories of folklore, religion, and warfare, it has also been highlighted in beliefs of fertility and immortality as well as death. In both medicine and mythology, the yew has poised itself in history as not only a religious and cultural feature, but has made its way to modern medicine in the form of a therapeutic agent. Today I'll talk about the toxin associated with the taxa species and the mechanism of action, along with the current treatment strategies for poisoning, and perhaps the lesser known, but incredibly interesting portion of the whole topic, the historical significance as a poison to its transformation as a modern day drug. So the yew family is recognized as at least 15 species, including the Taxus baccata, the European yew, the Taxus brevifolia, the Pacific or Western yew, the Taxus cuspidata, the Japanese yew, and the Taxus canadensis, the American or Canadian yew. They are conifer evergreens with red fleshy arrows where every component of the tree, except the flesh of the arrow, from the bark to the needles to the seeds is known to be toxic. Taxus baccata is found throughout Europe and from Turkey to Iran, ranging into North Africa. Some of the largest and oldest trees are found in Northwestern Europe. Knowledge of the poisonous yew has transcended civilizations across millennia. Hakate, a goddess in ancient Greek religion and mythology has been associated with magic, witchcraft, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants and sorcery. Greek writers felt the yew was sacred to Hakate and she is often found in art surrounded by others draped in the wreaths of yew. A number of other plants, often poisonous, medicinal, or psychoactive, are associated with Hakate, including aconite, belladonna, and mandrake. Her earliest appearance in literature was in Hesiod's Theogony in the 8th century BCE, but began to be depicted regularly in Greek art and pottery by the 5th century BCE. As an interesting aside, taxis is thought to be derived from the Greek word for yew, toxos, similar to the word toxin, meaning bow, and toxicon, the word for poison. There are innumerable mentions of you throughout historical literature, but the following are some of the most interesting and notable writings that I came across. In the Alexi Pharmaca, a poem about natural remedies, Nicander of Colophon, a Greek poet thought to have lived and written about flora and fauna during the second century BCE writes, see that you do not pluck the dangerous pine like you of Alita. It is the giver of lamentable death and only a copious draft of unmixed wine can bring instant help when it chokes the pharynx and the narrow passage of a man's throat. In writings by Caesar, it is suggested that Catavulcus, the chief of the Eberones, poisoned himself with the yew rather than surrender to Rome. Catavulcus, who reportedly died in 53 BCE, was king of half of the country of the Eberones, a people between the Meuse and the Rhine River. Julius Caesar devastated the territory, and instead of enduring the age of battle and surrendering himself to Rome, the king poisoned himself with the juice of the yew tree as recorded in Caesar's Gallic Vortex. There are other notes of wars and siege where soldiers would commit suicide either by their own sword or poisons from the ex arboreus taxus or the yew tree. Florus noted that when the Cantabrians were under siege by Gaius in 22 BC, most took their lives by sword, fire, or yew. Similarly, Orosius noted that the Astors, under a siege at Mons Majulius, again, preferred to die by sword or you rather than surrender. Pliny the Elder wrote in his Record of Natural History in 77 to 79 CE that even wine flasks for travelers made of its wood in Gaul are known to have caused death. Modern literature, modern literature has limited evidence for you would itself causing severe toxicity, so scholars have questioned this as the true cause of death as Pliny had written. However, a group of chemists from the UK sought to determine the detection of basic taxoids in the heartwood of the European yew, and actually were able to find a detectable concentration in wine that had had yew steeped in it. So while we can't say much regarding how toxic this would truly be, those authors have advised it wise to use caution and not drink wine from a yew vessel. And wouldn't you know, William Shakespeare writes in Macbeth a depiction of Hecate 
as the ruler of the three witches. She is described as directing the witches to concoct a potion of the gall of goat, slips of yew, and roots of hemlock under the moon's eclipse. A symbol of the Druids and the Celts, taxes are often seen in decorative hedging and topiary, but they happen to be concentrated in graveyards, particularly in Europe, aligning with the tree of death notion. You standing in many ancient churchyards are far older than the churches themselves. While there seems to be some debate as to the oldest view in the world, at the very least, one of the oldest, the Forthingall U, is located inside the Forthingall churchyard in Perthshire, Scotland, and it's dated to 3,000 years old. They seem to be notoriously difficult to date, and some scientists maintain they have identified a tree in Wales that is upwards of 5,000 years old. While of great importance in European history, there are also notable records in Native American history, specifically in areas of weaponry. The U boasts some of the strongest and most resilient wood, said to be soft but elastic. In fact, the oldest spear, the Clacton spear, or the Clacton spear point, is the tip of a wooden spear discovered in Clacton on Sea in Eastern England in 1911. It is thought to be over 400,000 years old. So farmers have been aware for many centuries of the toxic effects of ewe on their livestock. It was often said that the first sign of ewe toxicity in animals and cattle was to find them already dead. However, the first description of ewe poisonings in the British literature appears to be that by Kurt in The Lancet in 1836. There are several 19th century reports of physicians and scientists in these journals, but there in the British Journal of Medicine, alongside an 1877 case report of ewe poisoning in a young widow, the author interestingly cites Julius Caesar's commentary on the death of Catavulcus. So then in 1856, a pharmacist isolated the alkaloid powder from the Texas Bacata, which was then named Taxine. Following this in 1876, a French chemist isolated the crystalline form, which then allowed for the first record of the molecular formula in 1890. It wasn't until nearly 70 years later, it was found that taxine is actually a complex mixture of alkaloids and using electrophoresis, two major compounds were isolated. Taxine A, accounting for about 1.3% of the compound, and taxine B, accounting for about 30%. The full structure of taxine B was not reported until 1991. The toxic effect of the U has been directly attributed, attributed to these taxine alkaloids, which again are present in all parts of the plant except the red arrow. Taxine B has been shown to be more potent than A in animal models and is likely the major offender in cardiac toxicity. While both act as sodium and calcium channel antagonists, taxine B in particular increases the AV conduction, prolongs QRS, and depresses myocardial contractility, as then likened to verapamil and other calcium channel blockers. In some animal models, direct cardiac myocyte activity has been shown after inability to reverse effects with atropine or vagotomy. The estimated lethal dose in humans is about 0.6 to 1.3 grams per kilo, which equates to about 3 to 6.5 milligrams per kilogram of taxine, assuming 5 milligrams of taxine per gram of U, which is roughly equal to about 50 grams of units. But lethal intoxication of a plant is rare. Most ingestion incidents are accidental, small volume, and show minimal or no toxicity. Patients who ingest a lethal dose frequently die due to cardiogenic shock despite aggressive resuscitation efforts. Clinical manifestations of U poisoning include dizziness, nausea, vomiting, diffuse abdominal pain, an initial tachycardia followed by a bradycardia, seizures, respiratory paralysis, and death. The ineffectiveness of traditional resuscitation strategies, as well as the presence of complex and difficult to interpret dysrhythmias are well-documented in the modern literature. Treatment strategies are typically aimed at aggressive care and advanced life support as there is no antidote. However, 19th century physicians regularly tried leeches, antiemetics, and other popular cure-alls in an attempt to mitigate known poisonings. Today, target strategies uh, targeting the myotoxicity and hemodynamic instability are a mainstay. Atropine, amiodarone, lidocaine, sodium bicarbonate are frequently reported, though there seems to be some varying success with bicarb, in particular in animal model literature. Digoxin immune fab has been proposed as a uh, treatment strategy based off structural similarity between digitalis and the taxine molecule. Hemodialysis may be considered for the profoundly acidotic patient, but will not be useful in toxin removal. 
Extracorporeal life support, however, does appear promising in case reports and may be life-saving in severe ingestions. Some suggestions of intralipid have recently been posed for the lipophilic taxis toxins, at least as a bridge to ECMO. Many recent case reports and reviews have noted that these ingestions are very difficult to treat. In fact, a recent AGEM 2021 publication by Alarfage and colleagues reported a fatal case of intentional ingestion where they found an initial narrow complex tachycardia followed by a monomorphic wide complex tachycardia, which then transitioned to pulseless electrical activity. This patient actually underwent gastric lavage, received activated charcoal, digfab, lipid emulsion therapy, transvenous pacing, and ultimately does not appear to have survived to make it to ECMO. Another 2021 report specifically talks about ECMO as a bridge therapy, where there are about 10 or 11 cases where ECMO has been used as the bridge until elimination of active metabolites. At our center, we recently had a case of a patient who concocted a T of U needles for intentional ingestion, which unfortunately resonates with the most severely toxic cases today, which are purposeful overdoses rather than the typically less toxic exploratory buried ingestion. The EKG gives you a sense of the cardiotoxicity she began to exhibit just 30 minutes post-ingestion. Unfortunately, despite ACLS efforts by EMS, that patient died in the field just 40 minutes post-ingestion, likely to refractory cardiogenic shock. She did not undergo any advanced interventions. However, we were able to send samples for analysis, which identified the presence of taxin B. Lastly, yew tree has played a significant role in modern therapeutics. In the 1970s, Dr. Wani and Wall of the National Cancer Institute discovered paclitaxel or taxol, which was isolated from the bark of the Pacific yew tree. Later, docetaxel was isolated from the bark of the European yew, and these compounds inhibit mitosis by suppressing microtubule formation and are now a mainstay of treatment for multiple types of cancer, including the breast, ovary, and lung. Today, it is recognized on the World Health Organization's model list of essential medicines. And so from the times of association with Greek goddesses, druids, and other ancient peoples to suicide and warfare, and now targeting rapidly dividing cancer cells, it seems historically in both folklore and medicine, they got it right. The U is in fact the tree of both life and death.